All this week we've been looking together at how to uh, about the Bible and reading the Bible and finding a place to read the Bible and giving pro giving ourselves projects, getting ourselves a notebook and a pen and and uh, we've looked at translations, we've looked at uh, uh, study Bibles. Now we're ready to actually look at the Bible, and so I'm excited about that. We'll spend a few days talking about how to study the Bible, just some general things, because I think some people are totally intimidated with the idea of reading the Bible. It, it, you know, it's God's Word, and so how do we actually approach the Bible in a way that honors and respects God and His Word? Uh, and some people are just totally wiped out by that. One thing that helps a lot, as we said yesterday, is get a good translation that is readable and useful and accurate, and uh, it'll, it'll take away some of the intimidation factor. But the second thing is you read the Bible like you read any other book uh, in, in, in that sense. Of course, it's God's Word, and so it's unique, but at the same time, it's, it's understood by using the same techniques, the same approach, uh, what we often call hermeneutics or interpretation techniques that you use for reading any other piece of literature. And uh, if, you, if you look at it from that angle, it takes away some of the pressure uh, and the intimidation. So here's a few things I want to say about uh, how to approach the Bible. When you're reading the Bible, first of all, look for the one meaning in the text of Scripture. Uh, each passage of Scripture, like any other book and any other piece of literature, has a meaning. And our goal is not to find multiple meanings or, or so forth. Our goal is to find the one meaning meaning that is in the passage of Scripture. So don't try to allegorize, don't try to over-spiritualize or devotionalize. Just get into the Bible and find the meaning that is there. Look for that one meaning in that text. Uh, the, the question, you know, that often comes up in Bible studies is, uh, what, does the, what does that passage mean to you? That's not the right question. Uh, the right question is, what did it mean to God? And so that brings us to the authorial intent. Uh, intent. That means, what did the author mean by writing these words down? Now, the Bible is unique in that it has a dual authorship. The Holy Spirit is the ultimate uh, author of Scripture. It is divinely inspired. It's God-breathed. And it is, uh, therefore, what God wanted to communicate, His revelation to us. But He used people to do that, about 40 different people over a period of 14, 1,500 years to write the Scriptures uh, over several continents and uh, time, time uh, spaces and so forth. But you know what? It, when it's all said and done, the Holy Spirit had a plan. Here's what he wanted to say. And he used people as his instruments to write it down. And so uh, as we look at that, what did the author intend to say? What did the, the, the divine author, the Holy Spirit, intend to say through the human author, who wrote it down in these various books. That's what we're looking for, that intent. Secondly, and this is probably one of the most important of all uh, Bible study uh, principles, read in context. Most mistakes I have found over the years of misunderstanding or misapplying the Bible is because we read it out of context. We find a verse of Scripture that we like, uh, and, it, and we jump on it, and we uh, interpret it, and we apply it, in ways that was never intended by the authors. And so read in context. What is the context of that particular passage of Scripture? Now that will save us all sorts of problems, and it will get us into the accuracy of what God had to say. Uh, the next thing is uh, that there, another principle is to realize there's no contradictions in the Bible. Now that is only logical if you realize that the Holy Spirit is the, the ultimate and divine author. God cannot lie, God cannot be wrong, God cannot contradict Himself. And so whatever we find in the Scripture, because it is divine revelation, it, there is no contradiction. That doesn't mean there, are, there aren't times when we really have to dig in and see what the meaning is, because two passages seem to say something different. Um, but after, with careful uh, concentration, careful interpretation, all those uh, apparent contradictions will iron themselves out. People have been spending uh, hundreds of years uh, taking any of those kind of apparent contradictions and showing why they do not contradict. So don't be intimidated by that. Uh, the Bible does not contradict itself. So the Bible then, and here's another principle, interprets itself. If something is found in this text of Scripture here uh, that we don't understand, another portion of Scripture most likely will explain its meaning. 
So the Bible is its own interpretation. And then one last thing before we leave today is application. Uh, a lot of people try to apply the Bible before they understand the Bible. So before you make application of Scripture, make sure you understand the Scripture in its context, its interpretation. And that's where we want to go to next time, how to actually go into the Scriptures with uh, an observation, interpretation, and application in such a way that the Bible comes alive to you and I. And it does. And that'll give you a wonderful day in the Lord.